Hello and welcome to a very special edition of USF Campus Magazine. I'm Charles Claps, I'm the Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television. And it is my great pleasure to welcome here today the Regional Chancellor for USF Sarasota Manatee, Dr. Karen Holbrook. Dr. Holbrook, thank you again for thank being you. here. It's such a pleasure. We've had the opportunity to work with you on many occasions and you always are so well informed and so knowledgeable about what's happening here at USF. Well, thank you, it's my pleasure. There's nothing I'd rather talk about than USF Sarasota Manatee or USF in general, whichever you like, or both, hopefully. Well, we can talk about anything that okay. you really want to talk about. But I must say, as your six years of being the regional chancellor here at Sarasota, there's been some tremendous changes, significant changes, uh, and all good for the community as well as for USF. If, we have the opportunity, and we could show you right outside these windows, you are in the midst of building a six-story uh, dorm facility uh, for uh, potential new students. That is such an important part as you move forward. Tell us how that came about and why it was important. Well, you know, we've been talking about this ever since I've been here and probably long before I got here. Because we are a commuter campus and we love our commuter students, they're wonderful and they fit into the community beautifully. They come from all different age groups. They have different backgrounds. Some of them are working, some of them aren't. So some are right out of high school. Some of them are adults with families and some of them are taking care of parents. So there's a whole range of people here. But we'd have a lot of students who would stop by the campus and say, oh, I'd really like to go to school here. Where can you show me the dorms? And we'd say, oh, we don't have any dorms. We don't have any residence halls. And so it's been a desire to have a residence hall for a very, very long time. And it was funny because just yesterday I was going through some old files and pulled out one that said residence hall, and I started looking through it and realized that we've been doing this for the last six years, talking about what it should be, what kind of things we would want to do. And finally, it's reality. So we're really just so unbelievably excited. If you look outside, it's a six-story building, as you see, just absolutely towers over this building. And when you drive along 41, it stands out. If you're out on the water in a boat, looking back, it stands way above the trees. So it's really visible. It really changes the landscape of our campus as well as the function of our campus. It's now going to be a residential campus as well as a commuter. We still love our commuter students. But to get students from out of state, out of the country is going to be wonderful. So excited. And it adds a little bit to the value and the purpose of the university to have a, a, a dorm area for students to, to, to live in and, and, and to go to school. And as I must say, uh, Dr. Holbrook, at one time, when you came on board, I believe, um, you mentioned this is a beautiful campus, but it's hidden behind the trees. Yep. But now you can see these beautiful buildings yep. starting to take shape and form, and it adds to the value and, and the purpose of the university. It, it really does. It, ho it changes it. It's now a real campus. You've got a very different environment, a very different atmosphere. And, you know, studies show that students that live in residence halls really do a whole lot better, and they get very much connected with their campus, and their grades are better. So hopefully, I mean, our students get good grades anyway, and our students come in with just terrific credentials. But still, having this kind of an environment really makes a huge difference in what it is that we can do and how we can attract people to this community. Well, Dr. Holbrook, one of the, the things that I'd like for you to take some time to talk about is the new assets that you're going to have in this new building that you're going. It's not just a dorm. It's going to be so much more for the community as well as for the campus. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, no, the first two floors are the student center, largely student center, and the top four are the residence hall. But the first two, the first floor is going to have a ballroom, a huge ballroom, huge ballroom. You're in Selby now, and this is three times, that's gonna be three times that size. 
and it will be able to be partitioned with movable partitions mm -hmm. so that you can have smaller rooms or you can have the whole big room or whatever you want to do with that. A big cafe, cafeteria for the students, it's run by Aramark, a bookstore, uh, a private dining room, it isn't really private, but it's a small dining room so you can have special lunches or special events there for different faculty or administration or whatever they want to do. And USF World will be there, there's going to be an eSports section. So the first floor is really going to be a lot of student open space where a lot of people can interact. Um, and then you go up to the second floor and that's almost all student government offices, various different kinds of things for the students. Then you go to floors, well, to three, four, and five, three, four, five, and six, four top floors, and those are all residence halls, and they're a little bit different. The first ones are for the, the lower ones, are for the underclassmen, and they aren't quite as large as the top ones, which are more apartment style for the upperclassmen. But the neat thing is, particularly with the upper class ones, or the upper, the up top floors, when you're looking toward the bay, you can see the water. It's just gorgeous. But when you're looking this direction, you see the airport. So both directions, students will have a beautiful view. You know, I've always said I'd like to see a, a swimming pool on top, but nobody's <laughs> buying that. Nobody's buying that, except for me, but it'd be really pretty neat. It's, but it's gonna be a fabulous building for the students. And the good news is, Registration is open. If someone's out there and they're looking into USF and they want to go to USF, they can put their application in immediately. And they can put their application in at any one of the campuses, but if they apply in Tampa, they can say, I want to go to Sarasota Manatee and put it in here. But we want students to get going right now because we want it filled by it's summer. Very important. very important. We want it all full by fall, but we're also hoping to do a... Uh, slow start, slow isn't the right word, a soft start yeah. in summer. So we get students here for summer camps or even some of our own students. So we are so excited to have students living here. I, I don't think you'll have any gaps in, in people applying for housing uh, because you know, looking at the facility and how beautiful it is, it's going to be probably designed so well uh, and comfortably for, for and students. And brand new. And brand new. It's like moving into so a new house. It'll be, it'll be moving forward. And I would say, Dr. Holbrook, that a lot of thought and effort went into this uh, to make sure that this facility suits not only the needs of the students, but the staff, the faculty, and the community. And the community, absolutely. All kinds of activities can take place in the ballroom. Small, large, as I've, I've mentioned. So yes, absolutely, that was the point, is to try to make it so that it is perfect for everybody. It, you know, it won't be but it's gonna be as good as it gets. And for us, it's been in the planning stages for, well, as long as I've been here, and that's six years, but it's, it was in the stage, planning stages even before I came. I was going through files the other day and I picked up an old residence hall file and realized that ever since I've been here, we've been talking about this. And a lot of the things that we wanted to do have come true. So it's really, really exciting. And mostly it's exciting for the students because they have been so, clustered in a very small area. Um, they still are gonna have, over in our building, the big building now, they are still going to have their athletic facilities or their, their workout facilities sure. are gonna be over there, and the wellness. So the wellness comes together both with the athletic facilities and the health facilities. So that's gonna be great. And of course, we still have lots of programs in the other building. You've planned this so thoroughly and so completely uh, that it's gonna be a great benefit. But I must say, as well. The architecture behind this is really stunning. Having walked around the building just a little while ago, you can see that, and it's really a well-designed building. Well, we're really happy with the people building it and designing it, and I agree with you. Everything fits in with what we have right now, and the other building that we're planning has the same kind of architecture, so it's all the Mediterranean style. And I really think it's going to be beautiful. It's going to make the campus so pretty and so cohesive. Oh, it's a beautiful campus as Good, is. Thank you. You're just going to continue to improve on that. But if this building, which we're immediately adjacent to, was the only thing that you've, you're set out to accomplish, that's one thing. But there's more to this. And one of the great things that you're putting together is a STEM nursing facility, which is m badly needed in, in this area. 
Tell us a little bit about that and what do you see uh, for that implementation? Well, that's a building that we also designed. Uh, actually, I wrote a very long document. You may have even seen it a number of years ago, and we called it ISTIC, Integrated Science and Technology Complex. And then we said, okay, but this is an arts community. It's got to be ISTEC, Integrated Science and Arts com tech, uh, com Complex. And so that was what we called it. We, it was pretty well documented of what we wanted. We wanted a lot of open space. We wanted a lot of place where students could interact with faculty and uh, on, any, on just collision kinds of things. We wanted study space for students. We wanted socializing space, like a kitchen and like coffee oh, yeah. shops and all those kinds of things, in addition to the classrooms and the labs and the, the various things that are going into it. So that's pretty much what we're doing. The neat thing about this is we've been working with our architects, who are Hutton Brady from out of Tampa, and Willis Smith who, are, of course, are right here locally. We've been working on how are we going to design this. And so what we've done is we've taken the four main programs, and these are large programs that will go in that building. One will be the arts and sciences, which will bring in the biology and chemistry and physics, the labs that we so desperately need because our students are at Moat right now. So that program. And then we will bring in the health program and nursing. Nursing is the nidus, or nursing is the centerpiece yeah. for that program. But this is a community that really has opportunities for all kinds of health-related programs. And so while nursing is really the centerpiece, we're going to have a number of health-related programs around it, and we've been planning those. Third piece would be the arts. How do the arts fit into that, and are they overlapping? Are they, how do they fit in? Because arts fit with everything. And then the last one is engineering, and that's a new one for us, and that's a really, really big one and a neat program. So those are the four areas, and we have had, in the past week or so, we've had conferences with our seven architects, if you can imagine that, on the phone, on a Teams meeting, with each of these groups separately, each of the four teams. And what is so neat about this, that says so much about this campus, so when you started talking about the arts and sciences people, they said, well, we need this and we need this and this, but we really want to interact with engineering and here's how it works. Right. You bring in health and health said, this is really great. We're going to be able to use those labs and we want to interact with nursing because there's an opportunity to build things that can be useful in kinds of different tools or various things that we right. work together and we, need, and we need art to go with it because art is part of healing. And then you get the arts and they say how they fit and you get engineering. And each one of these groups is independent. They do not come together. But each one of them has expressed how they want to work with the other people. That is so neat because that's the nature of this campus and that's why, how we work together so well. So this building is going to be a spectacular building of collaboration, interaction, and then again in that building too, we are very anxious to have community space. Right so that the community can come in and uh, set up different kinds of things, have different kinds of events, or have different events here and then at the ballroom at the same time. Two buildings that will allow a lot of community interactions. The opportunities are endless, which you can bring to the campus and to your students and to the community. And if I may, I, I just want to digress just briefly, because I want you brought it up in talking about community. I can't think of another organization, educational organization, that is so involved in the community as USF Sarasota Manatee. You are almost at every outgoing event that's out there, uh, whether it's uh, government related or third party or nonprofit related, you can always count on USF representing themselves at all of these things. And that's an important part of how this campus is made up. It is. And to us, this is a big deal. This is what we're about. Now, we're not building programs in agriculture, for example. We're not building programs and things that don't make sense to this community. Our goal has been always to develop programs that are relevant to this community, to the workforce in this community. You know, people talk about workforce being the technical schools. Yes, but not only. Right. It's, it's not only but also, but we are part of the, tr the workforce and we are building all kinds of different programs that interact and interdigitate with the community goals. So our, we have identified our programs in terms of clusters. 
the health cluster, the business cluster, mm -hmm. the behavioral sciences cluster, of how these fit into the community here. We look at what are the needs for jobs in this area, and those are the kinds of programs we really want to build. Let me give you a good example. We were at a Lakewood Ranch uh, luncheon not too long ago, and we were sitting at a table. We often are sitting with different people, not just ourselves, and there were a series of engineers at the, at the table as well, and they said, you know, we don't have nearly enough engineers in this community. And just to hear something like that says, you know, we're doing the right thing, we're thinking about the right things that we're doing. So we're really working hard to build programs. Let me give you another example that one I particularly am excited about, and that's the program in risk management and insurance. This has been here for a while, but it has never been built up like it is now. But if you think about FCCI, you think about Shepherd Insurance, you think about all the big insurance companies that are in the area, lots of retirees, need lots of new people. And then you say, how do you go out to students and say, you guys need to get involved in risk management, and they say, insurance? Yeah. These are the guys that go from door to door and sell you a policy and bore you to tears. No, not so anymore. This is now big a business. very high-tech field. It's big business, it's a high-tech field, lots of really neat things in data analytics, lots of neat things in AI, lots of neat things in insure tech. So there's lots of opportunities for students, and so we're really pushing our new programs in risk management and insurance, which is growing very fast, and we're very excited. We have a new leader for the program, and um, you know that's just one example. And I'll save the airport one to tell you some of our other well, neat programs. And I must say one thing, Dr. Holbrook, if I may, uh, which, which you briefly m mentioned, is about the role of the university in the community. Um, continuous effort, but it's just not from the administration, and it's not just from the faculty. This goes all the way to each and every student who puts their best effort to helping other organizations within, the, within our county. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the students because it is so important that our students have internships, and they do lots of internships in this. I, I can't give you a number. I can give you a number that there are 400 and some internships. I can't tell you how many are filled with our students. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of internships available. And we do a number of, of, um, of shadow days. In fact, I think there's one on, I think there's one Friday, this Friday, a shadow day actually with the Minnesota uh, Black Chamber, where our students will shadow different professionals in a field that they want to go into. And maybe it's only the morning, or maybe it's a little longer than a half day that they spend with them. But when you get back together with them and say, what do you think now that you've followed these people? They're even more excited about the careers that they think they want to go into. And of course, the internships give them an opportunity to try it out. And it gives the employers an opportunity to try out our students. So our students are way out in the community doing lots of different things as well. I would suggest, Dr. Holbrook, that the experience of an individual coming to USF Sarasota Manatee is not just an academic experience. It's a social uh, condition as well. People learn how to work with the community, work with others. Um, so it's a positive, continuing, growing relationship that each and every student has with the university. Yeah, it really is. I want to give you another example, one that I absolutely love. And this is a program that we have that is a consulting program. And you might say, well, yeah, students do that often. Well, this is a little different. Mm -hmm. The person who runs it is Dr. Smogard. And what he does is he connects with, with companies. And he started out using local companies. FCCI was one. Mm -hmm and there were others, and then puts the students in those companies to solve a problem. We are now doing them internationally, and he is connecting with international companies, mostly that are led by our alumni. Yeah. So he's got two, three this semester. One is in Amsterdam, one is in Paris, and then he's got a virtual global exchange in Colombia wow. with Barranquilla, Colombia. Now, the students don't, they don't make up a problem. They give them a real problem to solve. And these students work in teams and solve these problems. And at the end of the semester, they present the problem with the PowerPoint to the company, and they rehearse them always ahead of time 
with a few of us on the faculty. I'm the privileged one that gets to hear them. They are absolutely phenomenal what these kids do, honestly. They are so professional, but what an experience to have that opportunity to do that, to do a real problem. We would be interested in kind of documenting some of that for, for USF because that's a promising thing. That encourages and empowers students as well. It, it so much does. And I'll tell you the one about in Barranquilla right now, what they're working on is a food, uh, a, a food science project. But the students, this is a little different. With the other companies, our students work with the company directly and with the CEOs and with the leaders of the company. This one, they're working with other students in Barranquilla. And those students speak Spanish. Our students wow. don't. So how do you get together with students where you speak different languages, but you're solving the same problem and working together? I don't know how Greg does this with these kids, but he does. And he, says, he said, this one is really a tough one this year. But in the end, it's going to work. And so you would find these very interesting. Well, and these students are fabulous. I would suggest to you, Dr. Holbrook, that your students your faculty, the partnerships that you have, are those type of things that are not only promising, but they're ongoing. There, there are things that once you develop a partnership or, or something with an, an organization or students, then you, you move forward. And I do want to talk to you about one of your great partners is SRQ, which is right across the street almost, and is a great school, but there's more than just having a great airport. You and the university are looking into other opportunities in the aerospace aeronautical area. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm really glad you know about that. This is, this is pretty exciting, and I think you've been part of the groundbreakings on these. Yeah. Yeah, so we started out working with the College of Engineering, specifically with mechanical engineering, to add an aerospace engineering program. Okay, fine, so that's what we're doing. And some you know, people will say, oh, you can't do aerospace engineering over here, you're too small. Guess what? Three people have already been hired. We can do that. And as we plan that building, we will, yes, we will not have high bays, we will not have humongous wind tunnels and water tunnels, but you've got companies all around the airport that have those kinds of facilities. So they will be partners. So we, and a, as Dean Bishop has just told us, you can get a small wind tunnel that sits on a desktop. I didn't know that, but apparently you can for student work. So anyway, we're working on developing an aerospace engineering program within McCanville. But, this is but one of these but weights, but we are also part of the A&P program, the airframe and power plant program that's been put together by Manatee Technical, Sarasota Technical, and the Manatee School District. And then USF came into that. So how do we fit into a purely technical program that's for repairing and design, repairing, largely preparing and working on um, airframe and power plant? Yeah. We do because what we have said is for those programs, we can add a module. We can add something like cybersecurity. We can add logistics. We can add supply chain. We can add management. We can add a number of these things in modules for these students to take at the college level that will, when they graduate then, they will have a leg up on their cohort that is simply a technical school. So these kids will have a lot more behind them. So that's one of the things we want to do, we're planning really to important. do. Yeah, and then you know, the K through 12 program that's being done by a charter school and that's gonna be on the airport mm -hmm. is a K through 12 program in aviation, which is different than aerospace, but aviation and how do we fit into that? We fit into that by doing dual, dual enrollment programs in their junior and senior year so that those kids will have college behind them right. when they graduate. Yeah. So all of this means that you, what you've got on the airport now is a campus. There is no other airport in this nation that actually has a campus, an educational campus. So terrific. We're really excited about this program. So it's so great for the community because it opens up a whole slew of opportunities for students who, if they wanted to go into those particular fields, would have to travel out of area uh, to, to find something that, that would be suitable. But here, Sarasota Manatee, if you're gonna be able to provide that and that ongoing deep uh, involvement, 
it's terrific for students who are interested in aeronautical engineering, aerospace engineering. Aviation. Aviation. Yep. It, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity. And the neat thing is, is you may have heard Sharon Hillstrom have said many times that what they're building, the EDC, the, Man the Bradenton Area EDC is building, working with the community, of course, to build an aviation ecosystem. And that's bringing in companies mm -hmm. of all of these kinds of things that ring the airport with. So they're going to fit in to what it is we do as well, not only for jobs, but also for partners in research and for facilities, because we aren't going to have the big wind tunnels, but other places will. So it, it's really exciting. There's a lot of neat things that are happening. You don't have the big wind tunnels yet. Towards the future, that might be a very good possibility. I won't be here at that time, whenever that is. That's going to be a long time in the future, I suspect. Well, Dr. Holbrook, you know, I must tell you that you know, your, your involvement in the community, your vision, leadership uh, as the university moves forward is amazing. It, it, it really Thank is. It, it, great faculty, great staff. Yeah, we do. That's all, all of those things are combined. The overriding thing is, is how does a university fit into a community? How does the community support such a, a great university? And one of those things is that you do every year, for as long as I can remember, is a wonderful event called Brunch on the Bay. Big fundraiser, if I remember correctly, it was last year you raised a record-setting uh, amount. Tell us a little bit about that, about the restaurants that are involved, um, you know, the funding, uh, the fundraising that you do, what that's important. Tell us a little bit more about uh, about Brunch on the Bay. This this is always fun. This year, it's, it's always the first Sunday in November, and this year it's November 5th. Starts, I believe, at 11 o'clock or 11.30, and it's not that long, so people don't come and bake in the hot sun, and we have a big tent mm -hmm. and big fans and everything to try to keep it cooler. So we have a pretty good population coming to that. We always do. We have a we big, do. big turnout. This is the 29th year. And it's, it's fun to come because we have, we'll have this year over 25 restaurants wow. that are going to be here with food. And, of course, everybody comes for the lobster. We have lobster. <laughs> and there are mimosas. And there are things that people really get a kick out of. And so we have wonderful food and a lot of international food this year. And people can go around and eat as much as they want and sit under the tent. And we try to keep the program to a minimum right. because it's hot and it could be hot. It has been hot. Hopefully it won't be it's this cool year. Too. It's been cool, too. Yeah. But people don't want to listen to long talks. They want to talk with the people at their tables. But it is a fundraiser. You have had so many great speakers um, part of Brunch on the Bay. Um, you know, every year you have someone who brings a significant conversation uh, to the audience. And, and I think that's important because people want to feel part of the university. And the students are the really ones that knock it out of the park. They always come and, and say why this is, this is so important to them. They, you know, it's, it's a fundraiser for scholarships is one of the things. And this year it's scholarships and for the nursing STEM building. Yeah. But listening to a student tell a story that they wouldn't be able to finish school or even be in school without that scholarship money really makes a difference. And we have a paddle raise. We had one year, the paddle where you, I'm sure you were there, it was really fun. Went all the way down from starting out the top figures all the way down to the low figures. And then he started right back up. That's right. Instead of, yeah, instead of saying, okay, those of you who gave $25, how about going to 50? How about going to 100? And yeah. the, last, the last person to make a, bit, a pledge gets a trip on the boat. It shows the support that this university has among Sarasota and Manatee County. But it also shows what people will do if you show them that you have a plan moving forward to improve and stress the school, stress the university. Well, that's what we hope. I mean, that's our goal. Our goal is we live here. We want our students to be prepared here. We want our students to stay here. And we want to prepare them for the right jobs for this area. So those are our goals. We want to turn out the best possible product. Right. And those are our students are our product. So we really care how we fit into our community. And so we're out there trying to understand how we can do better, how we can always add to new things that make a difference. 
You're always moving forward trying to meet challenges. And there's enough challenges out there. But, you know, you rise to the challenge, you solve the problem, and move on. And that's a clear thing that this university has done under your leadership for, 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 for a number of years. So let's kind of back up for a moment. And this is a big year for USF Sarasota Manatee. You've got the construction underway. Um, you've got the student center, the residence hall in the works. The university is now part of AAU. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah. Tell us a little bit more why that's important. Well, this is something that we've really felt this university needs to belong to. There are 71 universities that belong to AAU. There are 3,982 universities in this country. Out of that, there are only 71 who belong to AAU. These are the top universities that get the most research funding, that are the highest research, have the best academic credentials, and, and best facilities. And Florida hasn't had an invite. It's only an invited organization. You can't say, I'm going to apply to be a member of AAU. Right. You have to sit back and wait and watch your credentials rise in all of the categories that AAU values. And then hope that someday you will be invited. And this year we were invited, which was, and a Florida no, university hasn't been invited for 40 years. Really? A public, I'm sorry, public university has not been invited for 40 years. So this is really, really exciting to us. It puts us in a different league. And, you know, we're at the table with legislative issues. And it's just, it's very, very exciting. And it gives so much credentials to, to, to the university itself. It does. You know, if people realize that being part of AAU lends to the worth, the value of the University of South Florida, continue to do so. I mean, it's a, bi it's a big step in the right direction. It's, it's, you know, you say we're a member of AAU and most people don't know what that means. People in academia do know what that means and how valuable it is. And so our goal has been, as we were invited to do that, to let people know why this makes a difference. It helps us attract top faculty. It helps us attract top, top students. It really does make a difference. And we are, you know, while I will always be proud of the universities that we have in this community. We are the only AAU research university here, and that's different. Other universities do great things in this area, but we are, and, and, and that takes, brings with it different credentials, brings with it different values, and it brings different outputs. I would say being a member of AAU is a valuable, valuable thing for the university, for the community, as you move forward. A side question. What's it been like for you leading the university these past six to seven years uh, that you've been doing this? What's it like, you know, being, being that person that people come to and say, well, Dr. Holbrook, what are we going to do about this? What are your thoughts on that? You know, what, what, what's your reaction to when people ask you, what's it like running a university? Well, first of all, I've loved it. I have absolutely loved all of the time I've been here. And, you know, people don't come to one person. We have a team. Mm -hmm. We really are a team, and we have an extraordinary team. It's not like Tampa where there's five of these, five of these, and five of these. We have sort of one in every single area, and then they have their staffs. But we have a leadership team of absolutely outstanding people. Mm -hmm. And every Wednesday morning, if we're not doing something else, we have a leadership team meeting, and we all bring our problems and our successes to the table to get input from everybody. And that's really important. To me, that's so important. It's not one person that ever runs anything. It's a team. And this is we've put together a team, I think, that's just outstanding. And, and I would agree with you, having known some of your Good. staff and, and your, uh, your faculty. They're, they're just wonderful people, hardworking, yeah. dedicated, focused individuals who are here for the good of the university under your leadership. Well. I, they're here. They've been here and they come and, you know, it's wonderful to have them. We have terrific faculty. Obviously, you've met and, 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 and succeeded in so many challenges that have faced, you know, the new facilities, you know, the expansion of the university. What do you see and what would you like to have accomplished as you move forward? Well, I would like, uh, the, definitely the most important thing is to get students in the student, the residence hall student center. 
get them all filled, and then get that nursing STEM building built. That is so critically important. I mean, now, the main reason right now is you probably know that our science and biology, lab, our biology and chemistry labs and physics labs are about marine. Exactly. That means our students have to travel 20 minutes, 25 minutes, even longer during season to get over there. And it isn't their lab, it's Moat's right. lab. Right. We have got to get those labs here. So that's our very first priority. That would be the first, if we do this, if we build our building in phases, which we could, if we do that, the first will be the labs. So that I want to see done, and then I certainly want to see the nursing piece. 59,000 nurses are needed in the state of Florida. 59,000, that's a lot of nurses. 2.5 million STEM workers are needed by 2030. I, I should give you the dates by 2030 for both of those. Uh, so we really have a responsibility and a need and a goal to get that, those things done. So that, to me, is my very important thing. And just to keep this university going, building, and doing what we're doing now. And um, pass it on to somebody else who sees the potential and the value and the absolute benefit of being part of a major AAU research university. I mean, consolidation has done a lot for us. And I would suggest, Dr. Holbrook, that you know, with the construction of your new facility here, that's going to even add more value to it, to what you talked about. There's going to be a, a whole brand new type of student that will be coming to so. the university. I think so. Oh. We hope so. We're looking forward well, to it. And I think it is. But, you know, the other thing that if you could take a few minutes just to talk about is to talk about your faculty. You have such a, a, a skilled talented, over and above faculty here at uh, USF Sarasota Manatee. Tell us a little bit about that and what you look for in a faculty. Well, you know, since consolidation, we have to look very differently at faculty. Now, the faculty that came many years ago came here because they were excellent teachers and that's mainly what they wanted to do, did not want to do research. Mm -hmm. When I came, it became imperative for faculty to do research. We hired Sandy Justice. You know Sandy, of course. Yeah. We hired Sandy to do research, to, to lead the research enterprise, and now our faculty are doing research, so much so that we've taken the old Howard Johnson's motel over there, I mean, if you can imagine, and the bookstore, which used to be the Howard Johnson restaurant, that's now our bookstore, and uh, the motel has become what we call the research annex. And um, we have a lot of faculty that are working in different spaces in those different, those, the different, I'm going to say labs, but they're not labs, they're, they're basically rooms that have been converted. So we have a number of faculty programs that are going on, going on over there. But with the new nursing STEM building, we will have research facilities. That's so, I mean, this is fine. That's going to be fabulous. It will make such a big difference. And, you know, having met a few of your faculty, it, it's so impressive at, at the, the quality of what they bring to, to their profession. Absolutely amazing. I mean, we were not being funded. We are now being funded. And you know, Denise Davis Cotton has gotten herself an $8.5 million grant, and she just got another new $2.6 million grant. I saw that For, in the paper the other yeah. day. So, and other faculty, we have uh, Michelle Arnold, who does work on hearing, and particularly on hearing in aging populations, and has shown that, that bad hearing corresponds with Alzheimer's and dementias. So hearing is terribly important in the elderly population. So she works on that. I mean, we have faculty who do all kinds of interesting things. A lot of cybersecurity work that goes on. Um, we've got some wonderful people in criminology and uh, work with Sela Freedom. I mean, we've, we've just got a variety of really outstanding faculty who are now good researchers. And why? Because they are. But the other reason is with consolidation, our faculty are no different than the faculty in Tampa mm -hmm. or in St. Petersburg. They all have to live by the same criteria for promotion and tenure. And so our faculty aren't a second-rate faculty or a second class. They are absolutely outstanding. And now that when we pick faculty, we have to hire faculty that come with grants or have grant potential. Right, right. Yeah, and which is why we need facilities, because you can't bring in people to do research if you don't have any facilities for them to do research in. 
So all of this stuff goes together. Good faculty, good facilities, good students. And, and I also must mention your hotel management uh, uh, faculty. Having known quite a few people that are, it's a wonderful facility. People come from all over to enroll in USF Sarasota Manatee's uh, hospitality management curriculum. But you have to know, it's not just Sarasota Manatee. It's now in St. Petersburg and it's now in Tampa. See, that's what consolidation that's has done. It's expanded it and Jihan has just said, Easy. Jihan Chobanoglu, our dean, has said, we have increased enrollment 300%. So, I mean, this serves the community beautifully, yes, but it serves the world. So we're pretty excited about this program. As well, you should be excited about all of the many things that have come under your watch that you've accomplished and set out to do. Uh, you have to be very proud of what has been accomplished during a short six years as, as you're the regional chancellor. And, and it's something to be very, very proud of. Not only within the university system, but within this community as well, because you are so well respected and admired uh, for the work that you do within the community for both Sarasota and Manatee County. Well, you are very kind, and I feel very fortunate. I have absolutely loved my time here. Yeah, I never get up every day and, and in the morning and say, gee, I don't feel like going to work. <laughs> I always like to walk in the building and look at that beautiful floor oh, yes. in the rotunda. You yeah. know, that's... It's gorgeous. That's, yeah, that's pretty inspiring to go in every it's day. It's a beautiful campus. It's a beautiful campus, and, and as you're uh, expanding this, this is certainly something to, to continue to be very proud of. So, Dr. Holberg, we're kind of winding down a little bit, but I want to give you an opportunity to speak to the community, uh, to speak to not only your staff, your faculty, but the students, but all those many organizations that you've accomplished things with. What would your message be uh, about the significance, the importance of USF Sarasota Manatee. Well, I can be very brief on that. We want to be your partner, and that's the goal we have set, and that's what we try to do all the time. And let us know how we can do better. Let us know how we can help advance the community, sure. because this is where we live, this is where we love being, and this is where we want our students to stay. And you know, our students come in here, and a lot of them could go anywhere, anywhere. but they come because anywhere they like they it here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my message is, you know, thanks to the faculty and staff. We have terrific staff. So often we don't talk about our staff, but you know, we couldn't do half of what we do yeah. without having an extraordinary staff. And um, they work, they're one-on-one -on -one with faculty. So it's really important that we have all these people. And, you know, it's just a great place to be. I just feel very lucky. This university is very lucky to have you. Well, uh, thank you. Your vision, your leadership, your skills in working not only with the community, but with your staff and your faculty has proven that USF has a real vital place in this community. Well, thank you. We're part of a great university. We're really proud of being consolidated. We're really proud of being one USF and um, taking advantage of all the resources giving back as much as we possibly can. So thank you. And I always thank you for singling us out. We really appreciate well, it. it. And it needs to be singled out because the USF needs to come uh, to the attention of a wide variety of different people. As I was just going to mention, you work very closely with the legislature on a wide variety of things. And you know, the legislature really admires, all the legislators admire what you've done for USF and are there to support you for the most part. And they do a great job. We've been so lucky. We're, we're so lucky. It's so, a great legislative yeah, delegation. We do have a great delegate, yeah, in both Sarasota and Manatee counties, both of them. But in working with the uh, delegation, you know, you have to go there sometimes and talk to them about funding and resources and things like that. And they're very responsive they to, to, your, yeah. to your request. They are. And of course, we have Casey Welch, who is our government relations person. And Casey has years of buildup with all of the people in the community and the legislature. So Casey's a great out front person. He is, or, Casey Wells is a very yep. talented young man. Yep. He brings all of his enthusiasm and energy uh, into helping the university. Dr. Holbrook, I can't thank you enough for taking a little time out of your day uh, to do this. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I would suggest to you, uh, ma'am, that 
down the road, we want to talk to some of your faculty members. We want to talk to some of your staff, you know, about what's going forward. And maybe even some of your students to say why they chose USF, why USF is important to them. So I can see developing a whole series with USF as we move forward. We would be greatly honored for you to do that. Honored, it would be our, truthfully. It would be our pleasure. And ours as well. So thank you very much. I always like talking to you. Well, it's a pleasure Should talking. I, I always to look say. forward to it. Every time we're out in a, on a shoot and I see you around, I always make it a point of trying to say hello to you because you're such a charming, uh, uh, enthusiastic woman. And I can see you know, not only the, the admiration you have for this university, but the effort that you've put forward into making sure that this university continues to be as successful as it is. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you. I, and thank you for joining us on this special edition of USF Sarasota Manatee Magazine.